Assassin's Creed is full of history, whether it's historical figures, historical events and even historical landmarks. If I was to take a wild guess, I'd say there's at least over 100 historical landmarks in all the Assassin's Creed games combined. So what I want to do in this video is go over the best historical landmarks from every Assassin's Creed game. Of course since there's an absurd amount, I'm not just going to list one, but instead I'm going to list two. Oh and if you want to see my favourite historical events in Assassin's Creed then check out this video. Anyway with all that said, let's just get right into it. Okay so let's start off with Assassin's Creed 1 and work our way up to the latest game being Assassin's Creed Mirage. Assassin's Creed 1 is of course set during the Third Crusade in the Holy Land of 1191 so of course there's going to be an abundance of historical landmarks. Now the first one that instantly jumps to my head is definitely Masyaf Castle, a place that a lot of people surprisingly do not know is based on real life. Now if we're talking about how historically accurate the Masyaf Castle is in Assassin's Creed 1 in terms of its measurements and size compared to real life, I'm pretty sure it's not the most accurate actually portrayed. But nonetheless, it's still evident it's based on the once historical Masyaf Castle. The name Assassin's Creed actually takes its name from the historical connection of Masyaf Castle that once belonged to Rashid ad-Din Sinan, who is the leader of the Syrian assassins in the late 12th century. Oh, well if that name ever sounded familiar, well Al Mualim's character is actually based on Rashid ad-Din Sinan. Now going back to Masyaf Castle, its real life depiction sits on a limestone hill offering a great view of the village and the plains. Although the castle was in ruins, it got restored in 2006 and is now a relatively popular tourist spot in Syria. How cool would it be to have a bucket list of the historical landmarks in the series? I for sure definitely plan to try and visit as many as I can before I grow old. And for the second historical landmark in Assassin's Creed 1 that instantly jumped into my head after Masyaf Castle would have to be Umayyad Mosque. Now this is a landmark that I've actually known about before I even played any Assassin's Creed game purely because of how beautifully described it is in history. The Umayyad Mosque in Damascus is one of the world's oldest and most stunning mosques and it actually influenced the design of many others in the world. Umayyad Mosque dates way back to 715 and its design of shimmering mosaics on the walls and the dome itself were all crafted by the Byzantine artisans. Of course Damascus is known to be the oldest inhabited cities on the planet and the fact that it hosts one of the most stunning mosques in history is pretty cool. Legend has it that there's a shrine inside the mosque with green windows that's all dedicated to John the Baptist and beneath that shrine John's head is supposedly buried. So yeah, whilst Assassin's Creed 1's historical side of the game may not be as interesting to a lot of people, I find it very interesting and those are the two historical landmarks that I've gone with for the very first Assassin's Creed game. Okay now moving on from Assassin's Creed 1, we now have Assassin's Creed 2. The renaissance time period in Italy is full of history and that also includes landmarks. So with that said, the first historical landmark that I've gone with as my favourite would definitely have to be the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Pio. In the story of Assassin's Creed 2, this is the same historical landmark where we see the iconic introduction where Ezio and his brother overlook the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Pio in all of its beauty with the Ezio's family soundtrack playing in the background. It's also the same landmark during sequence 13 where you have to assassinate those 9 lieutenants which let me tell you is by far the worst mission in the entire game. But forget all that, let's talk about this stunning historical landmark. So the cathedral is known for its impressive dome and construction of the cathedral began way back Back in 1296, but surprisingly the dome was actually completed way later in 1436. It's a historical landmark that in real life will definitely make you just awe in how beautiful the place is. I've always wanted to visit this landmark in real life and I've got a friend that saw it in person and he talked about how seeing it at night time is one of the best things you could experience and I don't doubt that. Now the second historical landmark that I've gone with would for sure be the Palazzo della Signora. Now this particular landmark is not the actual building that you're thinking of but instead it's the centre operating as a town hall and a symbol of the political and civic life of Florence. The iconic building is known as Palazzo Vecchio. This building is by far the most characteristic building in the entire square and it's simply stunning. If you've ever played Assassin's Creed 2 you know that this is the same iconic building where Ezio's father was locked up and we play as Ezio climbing up the tall structure. The Palazzo Vecchio in history once served as the seat of government for the city in the past but of course that's long gone now. Currently it's just Florence's town hall. Besides handling administrative matters, it's actually open to the public as a museum, displaying notable art and historical items and on top of that, the landmark gets over 1 million visitors every year making it pretty iconic to visit. So yeah, both the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Pio and also the Palazzo della Signora are the two historical landmarks in Assassin's Creed 2 that I've gone with. 
Okay, now staying in the theme of Italy, we've now gone from Florence to quite a few different cities in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. There are, I believe, nine total cities we actually visit during the game, from Rome to Venice to Vienna and so on. But of course, the main city being Rome is where my first favorite historical landmark is, and that's of course going to be the Colosseum. This is definitely one of the top three most known historical landmarks in this entire video. The Colosseum, if you're not aware, is a historical landmark that in real history was a landmark that started its construction way back in the year 72, many many years ago and finished in the year 80. In the era of the Roman Empire, the Colosseum provided a venue for over 50,000 spectators to relish in its grand spectacles. I'm talking about gladiator duels, exotic animals, reenactments of historical battles and even executions, all inside this one famous landmark. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the Colosseum was of course pretty much in near ruins. We did however have the layers of Romulus to do in the Colosseum, as well as it containing one of the locations in which Clay Kazmarek inscribed a rift. Now what's rather interesting is what the Colosseum is now in today's day and age. It's not only a historical landmark but it's also a massive contributor to Italy's tourism revenue. In fact in 2018 the Colosseum generated over 63.3 million dollars making it I believe the highest earning tourist attraction in Italy and rightfully so. It's honestly quite stunning. Now the second historical landmark that I've gone with in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood would have to be the Pantheon located in Rome. Now the Pantheon stands out as not only the most well preserved ancient Roman monument globally but also the most replicated which is pretty obvious just by looking at its design. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the Pantheon is the same location where the mission The Banker starts in which we pretty much climb the building to assassinate somebody and disguise as the banker. Here's a pretty pointless and unnecessary fact. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you can see a continuous beam of light that's shining from the top of the Pantheon's oculus, no matter whether it's day or night. Now that I've said my random and pointless fact, let's move on to Assassin's Creed Revelations. Okay, so Assassin's Creed Revelations, and we've finally diverted away from the Italian time period, and instead into a completely different setting being 16th century Constantinople. Assassin's Creed Revelations setting is definitely one with quite a handful of historical portrayal, whether it's figures, events, and also landmarks. And the first particular historical landmark that I've gone with is the Hagia Sophia. Now this particular landmark is absolutely stunning both in the game and in real life. In Assassin's Creed Revelations, this is the same landmark where we're able to complete the scattered memoirs of Ishak Pasha and recover his armor set. In real life, the Hagia Sophia is frequently hailed as the 8th wonder of the world and stands out as one of Istanbul's most awe-inspiring attractions. Its history is marked with so much turbulence, making it one of the most historically rich landmarks globally. It was constructed during the 6th century, where it was originally built as a Christian church under the supervision of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I. Now interestingly, over the centuries, it underwent quite a fair amount of transformations, serving as a mosque, then later converted into a museum and then repurposed back as a mosque once more. It's such a visually stunning historical landmark in real life. I mean, just take a look at these images. It's actually a very beautiful landmark. In fact, it's so stunning that once its construction was completed, the Emperor Justinian himself entered the building and shouted, Solomon, I have outdone thee, which is of course a reference to King Solomon. You know, now that I think about it, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the same landmark with Sophia Sato and Ezio had a picnic. I mean, I could just google it as of me making this video, but I'd rather just take a wild guess. If I'm wrong, then I'd just look stupid. Anyway, the second historical landmark that I've gone with in Revelations would definitely be the Galata Tower. It's of course the most noticeable structure in the entire game and how tall it is. The Galata Tower is a medieval stone tower situated in the Galata district of Constantinople. It stands at an impressive height of 219.5 feet tall and at first was celebrated as an engineering and architectural masterpiece and surprisingly it claimed the title of the tallest building in Istanbul for quite a while. Fun fact, the structure actually served various purposes throughout its history, first as a jail, then as an observatory house and lastly as a watchtower. Of course in today's day and age it's gone through so much and is now just a historical landmark that's open to the public where it functions as a 360 degree viewing platform of the entirety of Istanbul. The most memorable scene I can think of when it comes to the Galata Tower in Assassin's Creed Revelations would probably be the race between Ezio and Yusuf Tazim when Ezio was introduced to the Hookblade. Ah, good times. Okay, now moving on to Assassin's Creed 3, and with this game, I'll be completely honest. There aren't really that many historical landmarks that interest me. That's not to say there's none, but just ones that piqued my interest. But there are a few. The first historical landmark would be the Boston Light. 
Now at first glance, this of course just seems to be an ordinary lighthouse, but it's actually the very first lighthouse that was ever built in the United States. The Boston Light was constructed to guide ships into Boston Harbor at night. Unfortunately, during the Siege of Boston, revolutionaries targeted it, attacking and setting the building on fire. And then when the British started repairing it, the revolutionaries came back and burnt it down once again. However, it was reconstructed in 1783, and the current lighthouse tower that we see in today's day and age stands as the nation's second oldest, which of course bears witness to both its historical significance and also the enduring resilience of this historical structure. It's nothing special in Assassin's Creed 3 to be honest. In fact, I believe there was that one Frontiersman mission where apparently the top of the lighthouse was haunted, but of course it was just a scarecrow in the end. The second historical landmark that I've selected for Assassin's Creed 3 is a lot more well known in history and that is actually the house of Paul Revere. Now if you don't know who Paul Revere is in real history, he's a man that is famous for being assigned with the task of riding to Lexington, Massachusetts to convey the urgent message that British soldiers stationed in Boston were preparing to march into the countryside northwest of town. Of course we also play this mission during the game. In fact I place this mission as my least favourite in the entirety of Assassin's Creed 3. But forget about that mission. What's actually quite interesting is that you're able to see Paul Revere's real life house in Assassin's Creed 3. It's pretty accurate as well, so it was clearly a well thought out implementation of a historical landmark. Of course in today's day and age, it's not really a house anymore, but instead it's operated as a museum. So yeah, Assassin's Creed 3 is a game that doesn't really excite me in terms of the famous and iconic landmarks. There will be people watching this that will definitely have a different opinion, but in the end, those are the two that I went with. Okay now let's move on to a time period in a game that truly does excite me and that is Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Of course this game is set during the golden age of piracy in the Caribbean and there's a lot of historical portrayal to unpack with this specific one. However in terms of historical landmarks, I can't really think of many that are of interest to me. That's not to say that there's none. I have got one historical landmark and that would be the old fort of Nassau. Now of course in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Nassau serves as the operational city for the fictional pirate Edward Kenway. It's pretty much where we established our base, joining forces with other characters like Blackbeard, Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, James Kidd and so on. And during the golden age of piracy that lasted for about 30 years, the city of Nassau was pretty much at the heart of it all. And in the city now lies the old fort of Nassau. Now the old fort of Nassau, which is also recognised as Fort Nassau, was originally constructed in 1697. It stood for almost two centuries, holding a very important historical legacy that was until its eventual demolition in 1897. In Black Flag, it's more known as just the fort of Nassau. And during the game's story, we of course seized control of the fort when we took over the island. However, it then got reclaimed by the British reinforcements in 1715. Of course, in today's day and age, the old fort of Nassau is no longer a thing anymore because it was in a state of disrepair for hundreds of years until its eventual demolition in 1897. Assassin's Creed Rogue's time period is one of the more underrated ones in this entire series. It's certainly not the best, but it does have quite a decent amount of historical portrayal. The first historical landmark that I've gone with is the Old Dutch Church, which in Assassin's Creed Rogue is known as the Sleepy Hollow Church. Of course Sleepy Hollow being the mysterious legend that was a soldier who was decapitated by a cannonball during the Battle of White Plains. In Assassin's Creed Rogue, there's a pretty cool easter egg or secret where you can see the Sleepy Hollow legend himself, but only outside this specific church which is why it's so iconic. Of course in real life, the old Dutch church of Sleepy Hollow, which is the oldest surviving church in New York and its colonial graveyard inspired the whole famous story of the legend of Sleepy Hollow. In Assassin's Creed Rogue, the Sleepy Hollow Church is actually pretty historically accurate in terms of how it's designed. The building is the same size, the grave seems spot on, and it does seem quite identical. I mean sure it's not exactly a landmark that consists of a lot of detail, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. Now the next historical landmark that I've gone with in Assassin's Creed Rogue is more of a location rather than a landmark itself, and that is simply the Arctic. Assassin's Creed Rogue was the primary glimpse of the Arctic Circle. We of course play as Sheikh Cormac while we explore the Arctic in pursuit of an Isu temple, navigating an icy landscape. Now interestingly, in Assassin's Creed 3, which was the game before Black Flag, Connor also travelled to the Northwest Passage, discovering ships that were trapped in ice similar to Shay's experience. In real life history, famous wrecks like HMS Erebus and HMS Terror were stuck in sea ice during the 1840s Northwest Passage expedition. So yeah, the two historical landmarks or rather locations that I've gone with are the old Dutch church and the Arctic as a whole. 
Okay, now this particular one is one of the more interesting time periods and settings in the entire Assassin's Creed franchise. And that is of course Assassin's Creed Unity. Of course Unity being set during the French Revolution from 1789 to 1794 will have its fair share of historical landmarks. And the first one I've gone with is definitely Notre Dame. This is definitely the most detailed and well designed historical landmark in the entire series and rightfully so. Creating this specific building into the world of Unity involved a very well thought out process. Consideration like research, copyright concerns, technical restrictions and gameplay limitations were all vital, especially for something like the Notre Dame. The development team even gathered reference materials such as photographs, blueprints and historical documents all to just comprehend the architecture. Senior level artist Caroline Meuse from Ubisoft dedicated over two years of her life to intricately reconstructing the Notre Dame. The level of detail involved is truly remarkable and that's including not just the outside but also the inside. Of course if you aren't aware as to what actually is the Notre Dame and why it's a famous building? Well the Notre Dame is a Catholic cathedral and is celebrated for its breathtaking French Gothic architecture where it holds a cherished spot in the hearts of Parisians and visitors alike. And for the second historical landmark that I've gone with, well I think it's pretty obvious right? It just has to be the Eiffel Tower. This is definitely a historical landmark that is self-explanatory. Built in 1889, the Eiffel Tower instantly gained its worldwide fame as it was back then the tallest building in the world. Of course now I don't even think it's anywhere near the tallest compared to other buildings in the world. The way it's showcased in Assassin's Creed Unity is simply stunning. Of course since the French Revolution time period of Assassin's Creed Unity was quite a while back before the Eiffel Tower was a thing, it was an integral part of the world. But in those Helix time rift side missions that are available in Unity, you can actually see the Eiffel Tower in one particular mission in all of its beauty. So yeah, the Notre Dame and the Eiffel Tower are the two most iconic and personal favourite landmarks of mine in Assassin's Creed Unity. There are definitely a lot more in this game, but those two are the two most noteworthy in my opinion. Next up after Assassin's Creed Unity, we now have Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And similar to the game before, Syndicate also has a plethora of historical landmarks. In fact this is probably the game in the entire series that has the most historical locations. And since there's a lot to choose from, it was quite difficult to decide. But for the first historical location that I've gone with, that would have to be the House of Parliament. Now to a lot of people this isn't that interesting because after all it's just a clock tower and some political buildings. But I find it to be very cool. It's definitely among London's most iconic landmarks. If there's one thing Assassin's Creed Syndicate did well, it's their very intricate details and stunning landmarks and this is one of them. The most notable feature of this landmark to me is definitely Big Ben. I distinctly recall the instant the entire map of London became accessible. My first instinct was to scale the Big Ben and the experience did not disappoint. Every little detail including the actual giant clock is spot on and well thought out. I believe we did have one mission involving the Big Ben where Evie climbed up it to repair the telegraph lines that ran through the building. The views from up there were incredible and it overlooks the entire city of London. Now for the second historical landmark that I've gone with, well that would have to be one that a lot of people may not really recall and that is St Paul's Cathedral. It's a cathedral that's created by Sir Christopher Wren and it was constructed from 1675 to 1720. St Paul's Cathedral commanded the London skyline for three centuries. Its Michelangelo inspired dome elevates it to a height of 365 feet. Here's a fun fact, St Paul's Cathedral is one of London's only historical buildings that survived both the world wars, which is quite insane to think about. It's situated on Ludgate Hill, which I believe is the highest point in the city of London. Oh, and it is also the second largest church in the UK after the Liverpool Cathedral. Just from what I'm showing you on the screen, you can tell it's so incredibly well detailed. I'll say it again, if there's one thing Assassin's Creed Syndicate did right, it's 100% these historical landmarks. It truly must have taken them a while to create all of these one by one, all in painstaking in detail. So yeah, those are the two historical landmarks that I've gone with. Okay now going on to the next Assassin's Creed game being Origins. This game compared to Syndicate is in a completely different spectrum in terms of where the game takes place. From Victorian London to the shimmering sands of ancient Egypt. Now there's quite a fair amount of historical locations in this game. And of course the first one and the most iconic one that I want to talk about is definitely the Pyramids of Giza. Now this particular landmark is probably the most iconic in human history. There's even theories on who built them or what built them, which sounds ridiculous. I mean come on seriously, obviously Godzilla worked with the aliens to build the pyramids, which is of course the logical answer if you think about it, duh. If you played Origins before, you definitely have noticed that Ubisoft really pulled out all the stops in order to showcase how stunning the world can be. The game includes temples, statues, obelisks and of course the renowned pyramids of Giza. In true Assassin's Creed fashion, you can actually climb and explore the 
the Great Pyramid, finding treasures and a mysterious inscribed stone in sight. The pyramid also plays a role in one of the game's tomb quests which I won't go into it for spoiler purposes. Now here's a fun fact about the pyramids in Origins. Did you know the game's depiction of the pyramids of Giza surprisingly aligns with recent discoveries in real life, such as a hidden chamber above the Grand Gallery, which was only discovered about 5 years ago. How did Ubisoft know about this discovery way before it was announced? Anyway, the next historical landmark that I've gone with in Assassin's Creed Origins is the Great Sphinx of Giza. Now this particular landmark is one that I've known about since I was a kid. If you live in the UK and remember a show called Horrible Histories then kudos to you. That show taught me a lot of history and the Great Sphinx of Giza was one topic that was always mentioned. The Great Sphinx of Giza is basically a limestone statue that was depicting a reclining sphinx which if you don't know is a mythical creature characterized by the head of a human and the body of a lion. Not much is actually known about the Great Sphinx and also there's really no records about the statue's construction ever being found by archaeologists. The way it's portrayed in Origins is actually quite spot on. It retained its nose and ceremonial pharaonic beard. Bayek, who of course is the main protagonist in the game, mentions that it seems smaller than anticipated, which is pretty accurate. When I went to Egypt many years ago and saw the Great Sphinx, it was definitely smaller than you would think. Of course today it's pretty worn down and is in pretty rough shape. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the next game up after Origins and this game is probably the only game in the series where a lot of the landmarks, locations and events are all fictional. But that's not to say there's no real life historical landmarks. In fact the first historical landmark that I've gone with is the Sanctuary of Artemis or Thea. Now this is definitely one of the lesser known landmarks that I've included but it's one that's very interesting. So in real life the Sanctuary of Artemis or Thea was situated in the city of Sparta which is in Greece and it was a very important ancient religious site. It held great importance as a centre for worshipping and cultural activities within the Spartan society. The temple's numerous inscriptions suggested a connection between the goddess Orthea and the education of Spartan children below the age of 13. In today's day and age, the location of the sanctuary of Artemis Orthea is no longer even a thing which is expected. However, you can see the remains of it just north of ancient Sparta. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, this historical landmark is kind of different to the real life description. It was linked to the education and initiation of young Spartans. Now the next historical landmark that I've gone with in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the Parthenon. This is arguably one of the most renowned ancient ruins in Athens. The Parthenon is a prominent temple on the Acropolis Hill in Athens, constructed in the mid 5th century BCE. It's dedicated to the Greek goddess Athena, who is often referred to as Athena the Virgin. Assassin's Creed Odyssey's depiction of the Parthenon is simply stunning and I can commend the job that Ubisoft did. Here's a fun fact about the Parthenon which I found quite interesting. So during the war between the Ottoman Empire and the Holy League, the Parthenon actually suffered quite immensely. It was used as a mosque and it became an ammunition storage for the Ottomans. But unfortunately the Venetians bombed the area leading to an explosion that severely damaged the Parthenon and its sculptures around it. So yeah, that's the two historical landmarks I've gone with in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Ok now we're moving on to the last two games in the series, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Mirage. Now despite me not really being a fan of Valhalla, there are some historical depictions that I can appreciate. Yes they're not exactly the most exciting when compared to the likes of Rome or Paris but I guess it's still interesting nonetheless. Now the one historical landmark that I've gone with is Stonehenge. Now I've actually seen Stonehenge in real life and let me tell you, it might be the most boring and pointless historical monument I've ever seen. I mean it's so pointless to the fact that the purpose of the Stonehenge remains uncertain to this day and I have yet to understand why we as a human civilization decided to make it so quote unquote historical. So what Stonehenge is if if you're not aware is it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Wiltshire. It's a monument featuring standing stones in which some were brought from Wales and it stands as one of the most renowned prehistoric sites in Europe. It was built between 3000 BC and 1600 BC and each stone at Stonehenge weighs approximately 4 tons. I mean it's just so boring to even talk about. I'll be honest, there's not really any other interesting historical landmarks to even talk about. Yes there's Ravensthorpe in real life, a few castle forts and a few stone walls but it's not of any interest to me. So let's just move on to the final game being Mirage. Ok now last up, we now have the latest Assassin's Creed mainland game being Assassin's Creed Mirage. Unlike Valhalla, this game actually contains some pretty interesting historical portrayal. 
whether it's the culture, the characters and also the landmarks. The first historical landmark that I've gone with of interest to me is for sure Alamut or Alamut Castle. The historical Alamut Castle was constructed in Persia which in today's day and age is now known as Iran around 840 AD. You see today all that remains are broken ruins of this grand mountain stronghold situated in the dry hills to the south of the Caspian Sea. And what's impressive is that the castle is actually ridiculously tall in person, towering at an impressive height of 2,100 meters. Alamo Castle served as the legendary haven for the assassins, which were back then known as the Nizari Ismailis, until it was largely destroyed by the Mongols around 1250 CE. Among the many important fortresses, Alamo Castle stood out for its unparalleled magnificence and its impregnable reputation, which was reached far and wide. And within its walls were lush gardens, libraries, advanced laboratories, and the brilliance of scholars and scientists. Although bits of information about Alamo Castle exist today in the stories of Valhalla, Assassin's Creed Rogue and even the Assassin's Creed Secret Crusades novel, Assassin's Creed Mirage offers a very unique perspective where this iconic location takes center stage for the assassins. And the second historical landmark that I've gone with for Mirage is the House of Wisdom. Assassin's Creed Mirage features plenty of excitement in and around the House of Wisdom and it's no wonder. This place is supposed to be the brainy hub of Baghdad. Many clever folks, scholars and thinkers all emerged from this period. In today's day and age, the House of Wisdom and its treasures met the destruction during the Siege of Baghdad in 1258 and consequently there's not much archaeological evidence. And our actual understanding of this historical landmark relies heavily on the writings of scholars from that time. So there you have it, those are my favourite historical landmarks from every Assassin's Creed game. This video did kind of take me a while to make because I had to do a lot of research for a lot of these historical landmarks, but it was still fun to make. Let me know what your favourite historical landmark is from any Assassin's Creed game, I'm quite interested to see your responses. Anyway with that said, I'll see you in the next one.